today I figured I'd look at the Pimax swords that I bought a couple months ago for about 245 bucks when I couldn't get a replacement set of index controllers. I want to look at these because there's not a lot of reviews out there and the ones that are I feel like don't really cover the problems with these controllers. So should you buy them? Do they perform well? Let's take a look. There's no denying that the Pimax Sword controllers have a very unique design with this ring that your hand goes through. This ring is also where all of the tracking sensors are for the lighthouse based tracking. You put your hand through and pull the little bungee at the bottom. This controller with the knuckle style strap does not have finger tracking. So in Alex, when you throw a grenade, you just release the grip button instead of just opening your fingers. I believe there was promotional material when this controller was first announced that it would support finger tracking. Feature parity wise, this is essentially a Vive wand that is somehow worse in almost every aspect. We have the grip button on the side, a trigger on the back, the menu button, system button, and then the trackpad. The one thing that this controller does have going for it is the weight and balance due to all of the tracking being essentially at your wrist. There's essentially no way to get the ring to hit your hand, no matter how crazy you go moving the controller. Credit where it's due, the controller does feel pretty good in the hand when you first start to use it, and the weight also feels really nice as well. One nice feature of these controllers that the index controllers don't have is removable batteries. Underneath the palm grip, if we move the knuckle strap out of the way, this just pops off as it's held on by some magnets and then a little battery pack slides in here. This battery has to be ordered after the fact as it is not included with the controllers. They will cost you about 25 bucks for two or three of them. The battery pack just slides into the controller like this and is held in by a little clip at the top. You may think that removable batteries would be nice because you can just swap them out for additional playtime, but they're impossible to change quickly. You have to hold this little clip at the top and then wedge something like a toothpick inside to get the battery out. Now I'm back in SteamVR Home. On my left hand I have a old index controller it's been hit a few times so the tracking has actually messed up on this index controller and I have the sword in the right hand. So I'm going to open up the Steam dashboard and this right here bugs me for some reason. They've went through all of the hassle to manufacture a couple hundred dollar device and this is the model that they ship with the game. It's very jagged, it's very rough, it's textured abysmally. They had to make a CAD model to manufacture the device, so they could have used that as a start for this asset and made it look nice like this, so that the work on the index controller is clearly better. That's not even the worst part about this. They couldn't even be bothered to align this correctly. I originally thought there was something wrong with the tracking on my swords when I first got them because of how poorly they performed. So with the room view on the 3D mode, so it has a weird warping, the controllers should be pretty accurately tracked here, and the index controller in the 3D camera stays pretty darn true to where it is in the overlay. Now we bring the sword up. Now that might look okay. The this stuff over here is the warping from the 3D effect, that's, that's whatever. It's just not aligned by like a lot inside of here. It may not seem like much, but it is very weird that this representation, when you're in your dashboard, isn't actually accurate to the 3D model. It just feels sloppy to go through all the effort to manufacture a device and then cut corners on essentially the small little details in software, not even in the hardware. I reached out to Pimax support when I noticed this and they asked if I could take some videos or some screenshots showing the issue. I sent them some of these pictures that I have up on the side and they just wanted to know if this interfered with the use of the controller. I don't think this misalignment interfered with the usability of the controller since it's just a misalignment of the model file itself compared to where it is according to Steam VR. However, I was having some tracking problems in Beat Saber so I thought maybe these things could be related. However, more on that Beat Saber thing later. You do need Pi Tool for these to work. Once Pi Tool is installed, it does not have to be running to use the controllers, but it does install the required drivers and such for Steam VR 
to use the controllers. So after you've installed PyTool, you can just close it and never use it again. The PyTool version that I have installed is 101277, which is the latest version as of right now in August of 2022. I tried capturing gameplay footage, but this controller is so frustrating to use in games like Alex or even a casual game like Walkabout Golf that I just need to show you the issue in test controller settings instead. A good controller should have a good trigger that's satisfying, and this is not. As you'll watch, I'll slowly depress the trigger and it goes right to the full value on pull. There's no in-between, it flickers, it's inconsistent. There will be times where you hit the trigger about a millimeter and it registers as a full press. It's just not satisfying to use the trigger on this controller at all. The next horrible thing is the trackpad touch. As you can see, I'm trying to reach the top max of the touchpad and I can't get it. If I readjust my hand, it's better, but I'm still not at the max position for the trackpad. I have to actually use my other finger to get to the top of the trackpad. This is a huge issue for games that use locomotion like Half-Life Alex, where you're moving around or Pavlov. It's so frustrating just to do basic movement on this controller. My fairly regular size hands feel like they're too big and too small at the same time for this controller. Then of course there's the menu and system button, which just function fine. Finally, the bungee that holds the knuckle strap onto your hand when the controller is on feels of lower quality and it has a weird texture to it. When you pull it through, it has like a weird bumpy, jagged, not smooth pull to it. To push the button to release the bungee, you really got to send it to get it to move anywhere decent. And if you accidentally push it through, good luck getting it back through the hole. The, the spring is way too tensioned inside that button. You may think even after all of that with the weird controls, maybe you don't care about that. Maybe you literally just want some Beat Saber controllers. If we come into a slower song, these seem to track okay. That's pretty okay. That doesn't feel bad at all. That's a pretty slow song. But if we go to a harder song, Tool Assisted Speed Core cause these controllers to just die. If we start at about 45 seconds in the song, this is about the first drop where it just begins a whole bunch of jumps. It may be kind of hard to tell what's going on at full speed, but the Saber's tracking is not smooth. You can see him jumping around all over the place. So that playback was pretty terrible. Now we can hit fail and then go watch the replay. And this is at 30% playback speed. Right now the tracking here isn't that bad, but I'm gonna skip a forward a little bit where the tracking really gets to a point that it should be impossible for a human to do these kinds of movements. From here, I'm going to exit the replay, and I still have the Pimax swords on, so I'm going to turn these off, and then I'll just keep rolling. I'm not going to cut any of this. We can walk over, and I will grab my tryhard athletic taped index controllers. I'm going to turn these bad boys on, and then they'll pair up. And then I will go to Easy Offset really quick and load my index profile. And I will go right back into the exact same spot on that song. And the tracking will just be phenomenal now. Already this tracking is so much better than the sword controller tracking. The sabers are going in straight lines where I'm moving them. They're not all jittery and doing backflips like the swords were at a certain point in the playback. End that and hit fail. And we will go into the replay. I'll skip forward on the replay to about the point where the stream shows up and I will slow it down just like I did with the sword controllers. So this is at 30% playback. And you can see that the index controller is at the exact 
same song, exact same environment, exact same tracking. It's a million times better. These are very smooth. They're not jittery. They just, they work how you would expect them to work. So now back to that time I contacted support because there's clearly an issue with tracking here. So I ended up sending them this video of my swords versus my index controllers and this was about three months ago. And you can clearly see that these swords are performing terribly in comparison to the index controllers. So after sending them the video, their support goes, hi Douglas. To be frank, from the video you sent, it's hard to confirm the sword controllers are worse. After getting this response, I was genuinely annoyed because it is almost impossible to not tell from this footage that I sent them that these controllers are performing terribly, especially compared to the Knuckles controllers. Now, I work in IT and I know what it's like to do support and email support, so I decided I would throw together a more in-depth and well-explained version of a video for what the problem is. I assure you, the same problem showed up. It's just, I'm speeding through the video right now on screen. This video shows the same problems about how the index controllers perform great and how the sword controllers perform terribly in comparison. Now that they had the better explained video that held their hand through the issue, they said that they were going to try to recreate the issue on their end and see if they could make any improvements. I told them I was looking forward to their next response, to which support replied that they would keep me informed of when there was any progress. And then two months later, they closed the ticket out without a single comment. At this point, my day job was kicking up and I was just getting genuinely busy and didn't play VR as much. So I didn't have the energy to chase Pimax support for a resolution. That does fall somewhat on me. I should have hounded them a bit more. Well, they don't track very well, so for faster rhythm games, they're unstable. The way the touchpad is laid out with the other buttons is uncomfortable at best and clumsy at worst, making gameplay just a frustrating experience. The trigger is unsatisfying to use and very inconsistent, and there's no finger tracking. The only redeeming feature of these controllers is that they were in stock when Valve didn't have any stock of knuckle controllers and I needed a new set. These might be viable for more casual games if they were way cheaper. At a price point of essentially $300, they cost the same as a set of Knuckles. It just doesn't make sense to buy these for lighthouse-based tracking VR. Lastly, their support seems terrible. I was under the impression that there would be a follow-up at some point and my ticket wouldn't just be closed automatically after two months of inactivity when I'm essentially waiting on a status update from them. When I originally had an issue with my first set of knuckle controllers, after I reached out to Valve within two messages, they were already setting up an RMA so I could have a replacement. I was also somewhat surprised that Pimax never asked for any diagnostic information or logs after seeing how bad their tracking was in comparison to knuckle controllers. I would imagine that they would want this product to be the best that it could be, but they seem to just not care. So with all that said, what have I done with my Pimax swords? 